If you think about the reason it's important to have global reinsurance is because the likelihood of a hurricane, we had five hurricanes within 18 months when the Jeff Bush was governor. But there is no correlation between the risk of, say, a nuclear disaster in Japan or a terrorist attack in London. So reinsurance spreads the risk in a way that makes capital more efficient. Now, we want to minimize the risk to American taxpayers as long as there's an efficient private market to take on that risk. And there is. It's a huge global market, but there are unintended consequences that not just will impact the economy adversely, which I think the following speakers will address, but also make it more difficult to do privatization of risk for terrorism risk insurance, for flood insurance, and for other things that this Congress is trying to do. The purpose of insurance generally as an industry is to spread risk around among a diverse group of people. Diversity is its strength, not its weakness. And therefore, having some risks from the United States being spread to places other than the United States is, in fact, a feature, not a bug, of the industry as it exists now. There's some reason to um, have the IRS <coughs> not recognize transactions if they aren't legitimate, and the IRS, in fact, has the authority to do that. Uh, the problem with that perspective is that these really are real, legitimate business transactions doing exactly what they're supposed to. This proposal, by my estimates, results in about a 0.3% <coughs> increase in the cost of maintaining an ongoing investment, and that has enough of an effect on GDP to make the tax revenues look a little bit worse instead of um, a billion dollars, you'd raise only about two-thirds of that. It's not about protecting the U.S. tax base. It's not about um, uh, tax evasion. It's pure and simple protectionism. It's about throwing up a barrier at the border for um, domestic providers. But this is real-world implications. I mean, if you think about the types of events and disasters that reinsurance is used for, that, um, that global reinsurance is used for, terrorist attacks, large hurricanes, oil rigs blowing up, airplanes blowing up. I mean, these are enormous events that require huge sums of money. And if you have reinsurance that is that the supply that gets constricted or is more expensive, by definition, you're going to have the less business, less economic activity that touches a whole lot of sectors of the economy. Very quickly, in WTO obligations, this violates U.S. obligation to provide national treatment. National treatment means you cannot treat foreign providers worse than domestics. The U.S., in return, gets treated the same way overseas. So it's, it's, it's a mutual benefit. This tax applies only to uh, foreign-based affiliate reinsurers. It does not apply to any U.S.-based reinsurers. That right there ends the question of whether there's actually discrimination based on nationality. And essentially, that's what this has, you know, does here. It would require these foreign reinsurers who are just providing a cross-border service to pretend that they're in a U.S. business and suddenly have to file with the IRS and be investigated by the IRS. Everybody <coughs> argues that those two things alone don't uh, are in a significant change based on what we've seen the past few years. Uh, I think, again, the, the facts just um, belie it. And even the election would subject these companies to uh, uh, effective tax rates 100% higher than, than their U.S. counterparts. So I think if this is enacted, um, it would chill tens or hundreds of billions of dollars worth of international trade. Uh, the WTO would, would authorize um, retaliation based on that amount. That's potentially billions of dollars in trade sanctions that's bigger than anything that the WTO has actually authorized in the past. Uh, so it would very much put uh, U.S. service exporters not only in the insurance industry but in other sectors at, at risk. And uh, even as Alan described it, the way it operates, it, it, it is 
it violates the what has been a tenet of U.S. international tax law policy, which is very clearly would end up double taxing um, a lot of uh, a, a lot of these profits to the extent there are profits. A key point of insurance um, is that these are real market arms length market based transactions. So you're not shifting or stripping profits out of the United States. You're uh, moving premium, and, uh, you're, you're obtaining premium, and you're, you're sending the risk overseas. You don't know in insurance what, what where the disaster is going to happen. It's not insurance if you actually know in the, in the first place. So you could be sending losses overseas. Uh, you could be sending profits. That's the whole point. Uh, there's an existing long-time federal excise tax on foreign insurance premiums. It's 1%. 1% doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 1% applied to premiums. It's a 1% tax on revenues, not on profits. So again, if you have a large disaster event, uh, you could have losses overseas that would have been taxed at 1%. If you have very thin uh, margins, it ends up being a 1% tax could be much more high, <coughs> higher effective rate than the U.S. Uh, corporate income tax. When you look at this proposal, uh, whether it's Alan or Tim's comments, I mean, equal treatment. All expenditures should be treated equally if you're going to do the calculation. I think it's a stinking, awful corporate tax code. But this is the one we have. You should treat all expenses equally. This, of course, would differentiate amongst expenses, as you pointed out, Alan. Uh, you can look at GAP or uh, WTO. This would treat foreigners differently than it does Americans. These are no-brainers. The, the one I get that really, really gets to me is it violates every principle of economics you want. What you're going to take is this little bitty portion, a little tiny tax base, it's the expense, and put a 35% tax rate on it. So you have a very high tax rate on a very small tax base, which it violates every principle of economics you want. You always want the lowest possible tax rate on the broadest possible tax base. And, and then it, there's one other thing that just goes here, and, and, and to me, there's just no, there, there's no cure for stupid. When you look at this legislation, these people all, all say we've got a pay-go obligation to find revenues to pay for other things. Pay-go is wrong. <coughs> You know, it is not right to use static revenue neutrality uh, to calculate what the revenues will be to make up for expenses. If that were true, why wouldn't we raise the corporate tax to 250% on all corporate profits? Then we could have a lot of revenues to be able to fund everything. Duh. You have to have dynamic scoring in this. And if you look at what the rules are for this legislation, it is really a pay-go, and that is the only argument you hear people using as to why we should do this tax, because we need the revenues for some other procedure. And that is the wrong model. This is a no-brainer. It's, it, it's, really, it's really a false issue that is obviously wrong.